Now Cahalan going across to the right back position to take that free. Touchdown towards Teddy McCarthy, releasing it outside. Paul McGrath. High and hopeful, but wide. Hawks first attack. And Paul McGrath wide of the target. Shea tussling there, but it breaks down into the arms of Liam Harnan. Anxious to do well this afternoon. Liam Hayes through the middle towards Brian Stafford. Hot not deceiving Coleman Corrigan. Well judged. Little chip forward towards Paul McGrath. Martin O'Connell's his marker. Here's Dennis Allen. The 36-year-old. Playing in his first All-Ireland final. Nice ball inside. McCarthy's moved inside. Teddy McCarthy shot. It's a goal! Two and a half minutes gone, conceived by the genius of Dennis Allen. What running by McCarthy, slack marking at the back. And it was Kevin Foley who was left with the task of trying to block this one. It went through the goalkeeper's legs. And Cork have gone into a one-goal lead. Well, that's the start that will settle down any nerves that exist. Nation puts Paul McGrath. That goal created out on that wing, and a brilliant ball through the centre by that great footballing player, Dennis Allen. One of the great geniuses of the game, and so many people wondered why he wasn't involved last season. Shea Fahey takes it chest high. Hawke have settled the quicker and that goal has helped. Cahalan rattling it forward towards Michael McCarthy, the skibbereen man outside the 45 metre line. Cut out, however, by Porrick Lyons. Great covering again by Lyons. Up towards PJ Gillick. Much will depend on young PJ Gillick. Hayes. Meads doing well, weathering the storm. And that's a free in to Meath for that push on Brian Stafford by Coleman Corrigan. Meads playing good, sensible football out of defence, trying to weather this, this uh, little storm that they're going through. Rocked by that early goal, of course. Stafford, such a hero last year, waits. Jostling for the ball inside, Cahalan can't hold it, gets there the second time, ahead of Colm O'Rourke. Shea Fahey opens it up into the middle. Robbie O'Malley misjudges. It comes to Dave Barry. Hawk making the much better start. Paul McGrath. Not a good ball forward. Taken by Robbie O'Malley. Towards Jerry McEntee. Dennis Allen and McEntee. Two great old heads. Cork sideline ball, despite the protest there from uh, David Beggy. So Larry Tompkins to take this sideline ball short to Teddy McCarthy, the goal scorer after two and a half minutes. Only score of the game indeed so far. Well blocked down by Jerry McEntee. Bobby O'Malley fouled by Larry Tompkins. And despite the uh, hamstring injury that was much talked about, Larry has decided to play without the aid of any strapping on the leg. Tompkins has scored 18 points in the championship so far for Cork. Mali here acknowledged the backs in modern football. McAtee ran well, sensibly picking that one up ahead of Larry Tompkins. Kevin Foley has had a very good season in the championship. 
speculatively across towards Bernard Flynn and he was pushed out over the sideline no question about the free over the head of Brian Stafford Shea Fahey back there covering for Cork to link up with Paul McGrath. Nice little solo onto the left boot. It comes into space, but there's nobody there at all except Mick Lyons. Liam Hayes was calling. And around Larry Tompkins. Good play. Nice balance and control by Hayes. So if he pissed it out of his grasp that time, which of course would be against the rules. Bobby O'Malley. And the elbow high. By Barry Coffey produces a free to Meath. I can see the taker quickly. Brian Stafford holds it. Lovely skill and elegance. High up into the clouds it goes. Callan's under it. Bernard Flint too. And it goes off the defender. It's gone for a 45. And you can see great crowds of Meath supporters just underneath us here and. Uh, Plenty of tension about. Brian Stafford then seeking his 24th point, taking it short. Peggy, nice run, and it's over the bar. From Meade's opening score, which has come after eight minutes play. So two points separating the sides now. But the referee had whistled for something that happened down there. The score is cancelled out. And so it may well be... It may well be the point now that uh, Beggy got a little bit earlier. No advantage applied then, so here it comes. It is now. Well, David Beggy, I think, was just dragged that time as he was going through, so the referee cancelled out his kick, and Brian Stafford's is the one that counts his 24th point of the championship. Fisting, McCabe searching, pursued by Tony Davis. McEntee is free. Player with the craft and talent to set up scores. Brian Stafford has gone wandering. Coleman Corrigan has followed. PJ Gillick. McCabe gets it back to Stafford, who started all of that. And a block down by Teddy McCarthy. Receives it again from Shea Fahey. Go to appoint the position, of course, caught the leaders at the moment. A belt into space, Dave Barry controls. On towards Barry Coffey. Cork holding it up, waiting for movement inside. Dave Barry chipping, but it's Corrig Lyons who gets there first, and despite the high challenge from Michael McCarthy round the face, the referee allows an advantage. Dennis Walsh can't hold. David Beggy. Trying to get clear of the shackles of Tony Nation. Being allowed an advantage, Arisi. No, the referee has whistled up. Nothing was coming of it, so the referee quite correctly blows for the free. They're playing away down at the other end. And of course, it was Beggy who set up the goal after 25 minutes in last year's final for Colm O'Rourke. But Tommy Sugru had blown up, and because of all the noise here and the cheering, his whistle simply wasn't heard. So this free is from about 40... Well, the referee is saying, Brian, take it back a little bit. It's now just about 45 metres out, or just a little nearer. And the Cork fans getting the highest vantage point possible from the scoreboard. Flynn releases it to Harnan. Well, he was hoping to silence a few critics who haven't been too pleased with his performances this season. But uh, wide of the target. And so it remains. Cork, one goal. Meath, one point and we have 11 minutes gone. Great fetching by 
Jerry McEntee, clean catching, the release quickly and smartly to Gillick, trying to get away from Conor Conahan, getting it onto his shooting foot as it were, but drops short into Kerrins' hands. Fatty here. Tony Davis running well. Loose ball picked up by Robbie O'Malley, rather a giveaway. Beggy, shipping it on towards Colm O'Rourke. Had such a good final last year. Oh, he wasn't expecting that. That came in on his blind side completely from Barry Coffey. He was looking around, and the shoulder came in. Colm O'Rourke was not expecting it. Both players in need of attention. This was what happened. He picked it up ahead of Dennis Walsh. And now watch for the player coming in, Barry Coffey, on his blind side. There's the shoulder. He simply wasn't expecting it. In need of attention then, Colm O'Rourke. One of the great footballers of the last decade or so. A player who at one stage was really told that there simply was no reason why he should continue because he had a very bad knee injury. But he bravely battled through all of that. And the referees had the book out and he's taken the name there of Barry Coffey. So Coffey is the first player to have his name taken. Dr. Con Murphy there, the medical officer, just checking Barry Coffey's condition as well was on the fringe of the panel last year but didn't quite make it into the 21 for the final once again and Burton there the physio Sean Boylan the manager was in just a moment ago to check on a very groggy looking Colm O'Rourke let's hope he can get back into the action quickly he would be a huge loss were he forced to leave this match so it's going to be a free Brian Stafford as always will be the taker Two points between the teams, a goal to a point. Stafford's kick deep towards Liam Hayes, who moved forward to Hayes, marked by Fahey. He started very well, Shea Fahey. And Teddy McCarthy, their goal scorer. Callan on the trusty left boot. He's operating on the right-hand side, though, picked on the left. Breaks back to Martin O'Connell. Is there some holding? The Hawk fans thought there was on Dennis Allen. It's open and enterprising so far, Dennis Walsh there, and Colm O'Rourke, very coffee. And ball out over the sideline. The knee ball. Ball of the taker towards Colm O'Rourke, Dennis Walsh. Once again having the task of marking Colm O'Rourke this season. Have a good final last year, Dennis Walsh, but the referee and the linesman here with the current signals that it's going to be a court ball, and Colm O'Rourke is very vexed by that decision. Well, he's very baffled by that particular call. Produced the score for me, trying to get through. He's got there. Short third tackle late. Back to Stafford. The little chip is over the bar, and it's Mead's second point. He's got both their scores, and that's the first to come from play. So we have a point separating the sides, and a quarter of an hour gone. Mead fans now are happier, I think, with the way things are turning around. Belting it forward towards Dennis Allen, making a good diagonal run across from right to left. Porrick Lyons his marker. Drilling it over to another unmarked player. Mike, that's a Paul McGrath. Into Michael McCarthy, unmarked. Good forward play. And it produces a fine point. Michael McCarthy, one of the finds of the year for them. He's come through the under-21 ranks. Played well in the Munster final, and that was a really well-executed score. Dennis Allen was the one who set it up with Paul McGrath, and look at the slack marking, which was responsible, really, for the goal just before this. But it was a very good finish by McCarthy. Cork then leading by two points. Me the free for that 
bit of holding on Liam Hayes, taken quickly by Harn, and he belts it high into the fourth defence. Colomore catches, happily recovered from injury, and it's over the bar. This game is opening up. this afternoon of course playing in their 11th final seeking a fifth title Cork playing in their 17th All-Ireland final and only four wins to date three of them this century jostling there Teddy McCarthy tackled by McEntee and Colombo Rourke and he releases it forced into giving it away to David Baggy goal opens up in front of him Coleman Carrigan and I think he was going to pass it across but in fact it's going to be a free in for holding right on the 13 metre line David Beggy of course has a little bit of rugby training and if we see this once again I wonder was he thinking about a pass into the centre rugby stand I think he was it was a good little dummy Coleman Carrigan invited into the foul and a free in for Mead So Brian Stafford stepping up onto the 13 metre line and you'd put your life savings that he would stick this one over with uh, no breeze to worry about this afternoon. Will this be the equaliser? In the 18th minute. Stafford has scored three of Meade's four points. The sides are level at Croke Park in the 1988 All-Ireland Football Final. Well, Meade's recovery now complete after the shock of that goal they conceded to Teddy McCarthy after just two and a half minutes play. <laughs> Liam Harlan is dominating. We haven't seen much of Tompkins so far. McCabe. And Colm work is through. Tackled by Tony Nation. in this year's championship. What a great forward he is, and uh, indeed happily recovered from that facial injury he took a little bit earlier on. Tony Davis drops it, and it's Liam Hayes, sharper. Very athletic figure. Nice little flick forward towards Matty McCabe. If he can release it back to Hayes, which he can, but the referee says it was an, e an illegal hand pass. And that takes a little bit of the pressure off a of beleaguered Cork defence. Well, these Cork fans are discussing the opening 20 minutes. Happy, I'm sure, with the opening five, but since then, the time has turned. Arnon is having a marvellous game. McEntee. Forward towards Bernard Flynn. He comes off the legs of Cahalan, and then he follows up and commits the foul against Brian Stafford. Pleads his case with Tommy Sugru. Now Cahalan this afternoon, by the way, he's marking Bernard Flynn, who has yet to score. Brian Stafford is the player down injured at the moment. Sean Boylan comes in to check on his great full forward. And meanwhile, as Cork substitute is warming up down there, and that is young Stephen O'Brien, just a couple of days over age for minor again this year. And Billy Morgan, his team manager, has a quick little word with him. They're club mates indeed at Nemo Rangers. Stephen O'Brien is getting ready to come in. Now, who is he going to replace? Paul McGrath came across there. But he's not going. 
I think he might be going into that defence. I don't think they're too happy with the way the defence has functioned so far, in particular their full back line. And I think as Brian Stafford is back on his feet again, it's Dennis Walsh who's going off. He didn't have a good start to the match, didn't do all that terribly well in last year's final. He'll be the first to admit it, and it's Stephen O'Brien who comes in in his place. Brian Stafford then, the kicker of three points so far, two of them from play. The nick in the face there, I think, on the right hand side of his cheek. It's high, not on its way, however. Oh, and Stephen O'Brien has fouled, and fouled straight to the face that time. And the referee signals it's going to be a free for Cork. Stephen O'Brien is one of the most promising young footballers in the Cork area over the last few seasons, and great things are expected of him in the next few years. That's Barry Coffey, tackled and fouled by Liam Hayes, and Tommy Suger goes down quickly to say, come on, keep it down. Me, the leaders, in case you joined us late, leading by a point, 23 minutes gone in the first half, Cork 1-1, one, one. Meath 5 points. Teddy McCarthy once again sneaking down into that danger area. Looking for another score. Off the post it comes down to Barry Coffey. Nice turn. Blocked brilliantly. Oh, a great save by Robbie O'Malley. Reminiscent of the great one last year by Mick Lyons. A great covering by the Meath defence. It comes out towards Colm O'Rourke. Marked now by Stephen O'Brien, the 18-year-old. Down towards Teddy McCarthy again to Dennis Allen. A little bit optimistic. Fork behind by a point then, and that ball comes out to McEntee. To midfield to PJ Gillick, that went through two Cork players to reach PJ Gillick. Stafford, that's it off his chest, only error he's made so far. Shaken a little bit, I think, after that injury, which needed attention a little while ago. This is a very finely balanced contest. Meath, the hottest of hot favourites. But Cork have come here with the attitude that they're really going to, as they say themselves, give it a lash this year. Larry Tompkins, first time he's got an opportunity to shine. To Teddy McCarthy, released quickly to Barry Coffey. Two players converging on Teddy McCarthy as uh, Coffey went forward, but he's put it wide. So just a point between the teams. Ten minutes to go now before the half-time whistle. Meanwhile, at the other end of the ground, the marking is tight. It's a competitive, hard physical game, as you'll see from the scars of battle on the face of Brian Stafford. Nothing given lightly in midfield. Larry Tompkins now, I think, has moved towards midfield, something which he did in the Munster final with great success against Kerry, you remember. It's a good ball forward for Paul McGrath. He can get it in quickly. Overhit the pass to Dennis Allen. Oh, high from the foot of Dennis Allen to Mick Lyons. He connected and the referee says, no question, that's a free out. The referee sees it as dangerous play. So Dennis Allen's name goes in to join the name of Barry Coffey in the referee's book. This is what happened again. That was an overhead pass. Allen tried to latch onto it, but dangerous. Oh, it was the elbow. The elbow, in fact, into the face of Mick Lyons. So Mick Lyons then, the second or third, indeed, of the Meath players in need of attention. Colm O'Rourke's been in the wars, and we saw Brian Stafford down needing attention also. So the referee certainly will have the option of adding time on at the end of this half. Dennis Allen there, a player who is back in the court colours after three seasons in the wilderness. He's playing great stuff at club level. And the fans behind the goal there on Hill 16, cheering on for me. Happy to see Mick Lyons back on his feet again. Jerry McEntee, I note, has... Uh, 
gone across to mark Larry Tompkins, and Tompkins, yes, is now at midfield. Tompkins and Fahey then the axis in midfield for four. Teddy McCarthy is playing on the 40. Colin O'Rourke been invited to bring that ball back about 10 metres. Well, this was a tactic that they pulled with great success against Kerry. And will it work against Meath? Tompkins at midfield and then Teddy McCarthy playing at centre forward. Cahalan trying to round two attackers. Tony Davis, that's well blocked down by Colm O'Rourke. Oh, a little of fisticuffs. Tension spilling over a little bit. It's a game in which great commitment has been given by both sides, but there's terrific intensity as well. White hole drops down to Tony Davis to Dennis Allen and the couple of passes he's got down there he's uh, used them very well he's one of three he's created a goal and a point so far Dennis Allen referee then having a quick word with Borick Lyons the 26 year old cornerback Dennis Allen wants a word as well with Tommy Subaru Larry Tompkins then, first chance to test out the hamstring with a free. That looks good, but it tails to the left and it goes wide. Well, he struck it well. And certainly no indication from him that he is carrying an injury. Judged it to a T. Held, and he wins a free in. Well, in last year's semi final against Galway in the drawn match, Larry pointed a beauty from this position. Just about the same angle as well. His side trailing by a point. Continues to remain Meath five points, Cork one one, and that's the amount of time remaining. Just a little under six minutes in the half. Teddy McCarthy breaks it down to Liam Harnan. Locked down by Michael McCarthy. Tompkins. Teddy McCarthy again. In towards Michael McCarthy, his namesake. The Skibbereen man trying to make connection. McQuillan does well. Forrick lines tidies across to the waiting Martin O'Connell. And the danger averted. Nice turn by Beggy. Robbed by Dennis Allen to Teddy McCarthy again. Kevin Foley is marking. Beggy is a judge to have touched the ball on the ground and it's going to be a free in for Cork for Larry Tompkins and a chance of an equaliser. Sides level once before in this first half. And for the second time the sides are level. On level terms, Cork 1-2, Meath 5 points. Larry Tompkins' first score has taken 31 minutes to come. As Mickey McQuillan prepares to take this kick out, I note that the Meath wing-backs have switched and Martin O'Connell is now playing on Barry Coffey and Paul McGrath being marked by Kevin Foley. Matty McCabe. Holds it the second time, ahead of Tony Davis, linking up with O'Connell. 
BJ Gillick touching it down for David Beggy. Good searching ball through the middle. Caught by McCabe. Wrestled, however, from him by Tony Davis. Quite legally, the referee says. And out it comes into the middle. That was a very, very vital and important catch. Tompkins is on his way. Stopped, however, but fouled in the process by PJ Gillick. Gillick was insistent that it wasn't a foul, but of course you're not allowed to chop the ball away out of a player's grasp like that. The rule book states you've got to flick it away with the open hand. Free quickly taken to Connor Cunahan. Breaks down to McCarthy, and so nearly a second court goal. Stopped on the line by Martin O'Connell and away from danger. Meath having some nervous moments in defence. There's some good intelligent running by the cork forwards, the full forward line in particular, when the ball comes their way. It's created openings, but they give, uh, they concede frees at the other end. Stafford winning that free, which O'Rourke takes quickly to Bernard Flynn, who is yet to score in this match. Seem to step out over the end line, and it's going to be a kick out for Cork. Bernard Flynn going through a minor scoring crisis at the moment. He's failed to find the target in his last two matches as well. That's against Dublin and against Mayo. Larry Tompkins didn't hold it. I don't think he was expecting it to get through Jerry McEntee's uh, arms. Free then quickly taken in towards Colm O'Rourke. Coleman Corrigan covering. So two very evenly matched teams, level pegging at the moment. These Cork fans full of hope that the Cup might return to the city of Cork for the first time in 15 years. But it's Stafford advancing on goal, held out by Kearns, and it's just as well that Nation was waiting and alert to kick it away. But really, it's a question of a clearance there under all kinds of stress and strain Colm O'Rourke grabs that's good fielding good vision to pick out Stafford but he's put it wide of the target There's a little bit of defending there that uh, I think resulted in Brian Stafford being put off his concentration as he hit that one. <laughs> Nervous moments in midfield. Meath asserting themselves. Cahalan keeping Bernard Flynn scoreless so far. There was a push and that's going to be a free out. Congested midfield, and it's Colm O'Rourke who takes it from there to Bernard Flynn. Into time added on for injuries now. And Beath winning themselves a free. The foul by Niall Cahalan on Bernard Flynn. The motto seems to be, thou shalt not pass. Well, we've had the trainer on at least three times for me on each occasion it must be said and I'm sure the referee Tommy Sugar will add on a minute or two this is now 40 seconds into injury time and Meath have retaken the lead with Brian Stafford's fourth point at three and a game that's so delicately balanced it has the makings of a really good second half Neither side prepared to yield an inch in the opening 35 minutes. Coffee bottled up and held.
Cork's 11-3 then, down towards Teddy McCarthy. Michael McCarthy knocked to the ground, and that produces a free on the 20-metre line. We've had a lot of this personal fouling going on over the last five, six minutes, and let's hope it doesn't uh, start to spoil the game. Larry Tompkins has been told by the referee Tommy Sugru, I think, that this might well be the end of it. Yes, this is the last kick of the first half. Will it be the equalising one for the third time in the half? It curls to the left, it's wide, and Meath then lead by six points to 1-2. The referee just waiting for the ball to come out. Well, in fact, he has blown the half-time whistle. There it is, and so as we tell you, Meath go in leading by just the bare minimum. It's Meath six points, Cork 1-2. And it has the makings, I think, of a really good, competitive and intense second half. And that's something we're looking forward to. Don Boylan, the affable coach from Dunboyne in County Meath. So the half-time position then, we'll remind you, shows Meath ahead by a point, six points to 1-2. Tommy Suger doing his best to keep the game moving along, despite the fact that there were a number of stoppages in the last ten minutes of the first half. So second half's underway, and McEntee touches it forward, but only to the waiting Connor Cunahan. Dave Barry, by the way, has switched, I notice, positions with uh, Paul McGrath. Here's Paul McGrath. Up towards Michael McCarthy. He's got a very good point in the first half for Cork. Back to Shea Fahey as they look for the equaliser early in the half. Larry Tompkins drilling it in towards that canal end goal and the sides on level terms. It's the third time of the match that's been the case and the equalising point comes after 28 seconds of the second half. And just to look at the shape at the moment of this Cork forward line. Paul McGrath, top of the right. Dennis Allen, now full forward. Michael McCarthy, top of the left. Teddy McCarthy continues to play on the 40, and Dave Barry is right half forward. Now there was a push, which the referee quite clearly saw, and a free to Meath. Liam Harnan, the taker. Down towards Colm O'Rourke, getting there ahead of young Stephen O'Brien. Of course, PJ Gillick. Once again, O'Rourke foraging. Such an experienced performer and a delightful player, kicking splendidly over the bar for his third point of this All-Ireland final. Neither back in front again. Got an instant reply, but he's picked up a, an eye injury. Uh, it may well be that... Uh, yes, I think he's missing one of his lenses, or one of them has gone slightly askew. One of a growing number of players, indeed, who play hurling and football, wearing corrective lenses. Certainly the way he hit that ball, he was in A1 condition. Oh dear. So, can they get the contact lens back in quickly? And Larry Tom, or not Larry Tom, because Tommy Subaru rather, wants him off the field quickly. So Meath down to 14 at the moment. Hit by a point, Teddy McCarthy's kick blocked down by Liam Harnan. It breaks back to Martin O'Connell, now operating at right half back for Meath. Into space towards Bernard Flynn, getting little change, nothing indeed really out of Niall Cahalan. Tony Davis has it taken from his grasp quickly by Matty McCabe. The sharpness of the left half forward very evident. Matty McCabe looking around there to see if Colin Rook's coming back on. He's still off the field. kick towards Barry Tompkins, that's a great leap by McEntee and Tompkins, we've got to credit two great players, superb fielding, but the referee saw it as a foul to McEntee. And 
Let's hope now a little bit of the tension that was there in the first half will just simply evaporate and we'll have a really splendid second half of football. Fahi deep. Touchdown to Dave Barry. Oh, a great save and point that race by Ricky McQuillan. That spectacular reaction. The referee saw him being held and it's a free out to me. Well, he may have made an error against Mayo in the semi-final, but he more than made amends when it really counted from Dave Barry's crashing shot, which was spectacularly saved by McQuillan. Now, Corker arguing, of course, that he touched the ball outside the small square that time, but the referee gives it as a free out. So, one of the moments they'll talk about, I know, again and again, when this game is over. Dennis Allen now. Nick Lyons, his marker. Dennis now playing at full forward. Blocked down by a combination of Mick Lyons and Martin O'Connell. O'Connell's pass is slacked straight to Tony Nation. To Dave Barry. Back to Tompkins, looking for point number three, and it sails over the bar. A man who was born in Dublin, brought up for a time in Wicklow, played so much of his football in Kildare, and now he's in the red of Cork. So they're level for the fourth time. The Cork flags fly high behind Mickey McQuillan's goal. And I think we're going to have a really exciting and hopefully thrilling second half. McEntee. He can be so influential, a player of great craft and know-how. Kick taken by Porrick Lyons. Oh, a great reaching catch, but not taken by Cahalan as he would have wished and it comes to Brian Stafford and it's over the bar Brian Stafford picking up the pieces that's his fifth point and Mead go in front again well such a seesawing game just when Cork thought that Cahalan had it covered it dropped from his grasp spilled down to Stafford and you know the end result Teddy McCarthy leaping high, but Terry McEntee judiciously fists it, but only as far as Tony Davis. Right half back. The punt forward to De Dennis, Dennis uh, Allen. Dave Barry here. The St. Finbar's man back to Tompkins. From an awkward position. Barry Coffey tries to keep it in play. Marked over there by the marvellous Martin O'Connell. He's playing well. Melting it towards PJ Gillick, catches it unchallenged by Conor Cunahan. Releasing it outside to Stafford. Inside to McCabe, right over enterprising football, but spoiled by McCabe's inability to hold. And then he tried to take it away from Tony Davis, and it's gone for a kick out for Cork. Lions then keeping Dennis Allen in the Lions den. Good ball to Coffey. You have to look up and find a colleague. Finding Paul McGraw, lovely skill, beautiful turn. And can he finish with a good pass inside towards McCarthy? It went away from him from Foley down to Martin O'Connor but it breaks back to Larry Tompkins a player outside him if he wants to release it Tompkins going for the shot and the score and the sides level again now this is more like the Larry Tompkins we saw during the championship this year you can see the determination in his face the fans appreciating the effort by all and sundry Hayes with Shea Fahey. Fahey, the other ex-Kildare player. And he's won the free. And the referee, Tommy Sugru, doing a very good job. Right up there with the play at all times. Tompkins. That's Dave Barry to come near to him from his marker which he successfully does turning around McLyons back to Dennis Allen and that was a good chance spurned by Dennis Allen 
most experienced player in the field exchanging harsh words with Paul McGrath the tension I think you can gather for yourself is quite immense the biggest day in these young footballing lives both so badly wanting to win Meads to hang on to their title Cork to win it for the first time in 15 years Dennis Allen who in 1973 when Cork were winning the last title was playing soccer with Cork Avernians with whom he won an FAI Cup medal Martin O'Connell keeping such a tight rein on Barry Coffey in the second half that's touched down by Coleman Corrigan to the alert and waiting Stephen O'Brien trying to dodge around the old head Colm O'Rourke he overcarried however free to me from just around the 45 metre line near the sideline Brian Stafford ready to take this free from the 45 metre line Mickey Kearns Wants it uh, put it to nearer the sideline. Billy Morgan then, and Dr. Con Murphy, Sean Murphy, a selector, and Frank Murphy there as well. All the Murphys of Cork looking on. Jimmy Kerrigan there in the background. There who played right half forward last year. Size level, remember. Stuck with the kicker for Meath. In towards Colm O'Rourke. High they go and fist it down. Stephen O'Brien takes it. Tompkins is waiting, and the siege lifted. The counter-attack at the other end, Robbie O'Malley jumps! Oh, he jumped out of his skin to touch that one away from the incoming forward. Belted away by McEntee, and the referee saw a push, and it's going to be a free to Cork, which Tompkins wants to take quickly. Dave Barry, here's Tompkins. Nice turn. He's playing well in the second half, Larry Tompkins. That's onto his kicking boot and it's over at Sales and Cork have retaken the lead. Cork go in front by a point with 11 minutes of the second half gone. Larry Tompkins, fifth point. Now the fans on both sides getting behind their team, trying to lift them and inspire them just a little bit more. Liam Hayes punted forward towards Brian Stafford. Onto the right boot, high. Bringing down just a little rain as it came down, I think. And into the arms of Conor Tuna, and it was held by Colin O'Rourke, and that's going to be a free. And Meath are bringing on a substitute, and you'll see racing in now near the referee, Colin Coyle, a player who scored three points in the semi-final win against Mayo. Going off is Matty McCabe. McCabe called ashore then by manager Sean Boylan. But it's time for a new, fresh pair of legs and some new ideas from Colm Coyle, who's impressed so much in the semi-final victory. Cunahan left-footed to Shea Fahey. Intended for Paul McGrath. McGrath there with Corey Lyons. Good balance of control. Dave Barry wants it. He's marked, however, now. Near the sideline. Oh, that was a cheeky little ball, but it's gone wide. Well, he almost walked it into a perfect position, but I think he might well have done the more correct thing, which was to play the ball in faster. And then Asalan continuing to have uh, a word or two with some of the younger players, like McCarthy and McGrath. Colm Coyle, by the way, is now operating at centre-forward and he is being marked by Conor Cunahan. PJ Gillick is playing left-half forward. Inconclusive. And so the referee is giving it as a free to Cork. Some of the Meath people will have thought that that should maybe have been a hot ball. Larry Tompkins will be the taker just inside the 65-metre line. Leading by a point. 
Dave Barry's unmarked, went away from his marker quickly. Good at getting away from the player who should be marking him. Cross towards Barry Coffey, touchdown to Michael McCarthy. Rounding O'Connell, Cork leading by that one point. Looking for more, and the free end from the 13-metre line. It's a good darting run by Mark, Michael McCarthy. O'Connell incensed. So the best spell in the game that Cork has enjoyed could see them into a two-point lead. Referee wanted Michael McCarthy back from the end line outside the 20-metre line. Should be point number six for Tompkins and a two-point lead for Cork. It is 40 minutes into the second half. Larry Tompkins, who wanted to play the game of his life in the All-Ireland Final. He was disappointed last year. Will this be his year? Not if Mickey McCullum and his Meath colleagues can have their way. Meath behind by two, but remember, so often in big matches in recent times, Meath have gone into arrears. Remember, league finals and that, but they were able to come back. Great experience and great craft and plenty of know-how. Stephen O'Brien almost taken the box inside of the face that time, but it's on it goes towards Shea Fahey. Tackled by Jerry McEntee, fouled by McEntee. Shea Fahey played really well in the semi-final win over Monaghan and doing his bit at midfield today. I've no doubt at all that the Meath bench will be worried by the way this game has developed over the opening quarter of an hour of the second half. Cork taking a grip. Tompkins getting, beginning to motor. And that's made all the difference. Inside is Dennis Allen and Dave Barry. Dave Barry was calling for the ball, but Tompkins did not release the ball. Tompkins, of course, who came into this match troubled by a hamstring injury. And uh, apparently it was a very real injury. I know that some of the Cork people behind the scenes were happy enough that he had a bit of a break over the last week because he trains really hard. Me, they're making a change. Kevin Foley has gone off and Terry Ferguson, who played in last year's final, is on. Tompkins again making the catch and making the difference. An injury to the face will need attention. Cork waiting for the trainer to be called on. Tompkins looks OK, and they're told they can go back again. There's Terry Ferguson, son of the great Snitchy Ferguson, who was here during half-time in the minor match, being presented as part of the 1963 Dublin All-Ireland winning team. Corey Lyons down towards Harnan. He's got a little bit out of the game in the second half, had a great, terrific first half indeed. Dave Barry. Tompkins again. He's getting loose now, and that's making quite a difference. Teddy McCarthy, ooh, high to the face by Hayes, and that's going to be a free in. A degree of frustration now creeping into the Meath team. They're committing rather silly indiscretions, giving away fouls and frees. And with somebody like Tompkins around, that surely will be punished. This is what happened again. Teddy McCarthy on a burst. The referee had judged it to be a foul at that particular point. Tompkins then ready to kick outside the 20-metre line to the right of the goal. Little or no breeze to contend with. Cork 1-7, Meath 8 points. He's put it wide. That could be a critical kick a little later on. Time will tell. 18 minutes into the second half, that's the time remaining. And just two points, as you see, separating the sides.
good catch by Barry Coffey. Cork lording it now at midfield and half forward. Shea Fahey on the drive. Outside him, he's got Dave Barry. Then it's Teddy McCarthy in the line, but it's overpassed, and it's Corey Glanzer nips in. Now Meath will have to try and get their act together and get some momentum going from midfield into the forwards. That's gone out over the sideline. Cork ball. John Goff here, who's referee of the 1983 final. Dublin against Galway. Linesman this afternoon. Now Cahalan, one of the strong contingent of West Cork players playing for Cork. Aimed towards Teddy McCarthy. 